to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Hi, this is me. I'm the star of the show, and everybody knows that that's true. Even you, even you, you and you, you and you, you and you, you and. We're rolling. <laughs> We're on air, Jesse. No, that's my mic test. No, that is not your mic test. <laughs> we are rolling. We are on air, and you are not the star of the show, Jesse. Everybody Jessie. knows it's true. Knows it's true. You and you. You and you. <laughs> you and you. It's so aggressive. I know. It really is. And I am not the star. People people don't see how aggressive you really are. You know, it's you funny. Know? I try and be the star, and nowhere, nowhere that I go, I'm the star. You not are on this show, not on the news, not even on Broettes. Nah, you are, shame. James. You I are. I really thought I was going to be a star, and that's what my mom told me, and she lied. <laughs> You're going to be a star. Give me a star, kid. Guess what, Mom? I'm not. You are. You're a little <laughs> tiny star, and you shine so bright, it burns my eyes out. I can't even see when I get home. That's how fucking bright you shine. What are you wearing there? What's that sweatshirt you're wearing there today? This is the poorhouse. Is it really? You know the poor house? In Wilmington? Do you remember we went there with Jared and Dan and everyone and I got love wasted? I that place. When did, yeah. you that, when did you get the sweatshirt? You got this for me, drunkie. Oh. So it was like hanging up and I was like, oh, I like that. And you sometimes like to be like Daddy Warbucks with me sometimes, which is like I let it happen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you'd be like, hey, babe, you want it? You got it. Right? Look at, look at me. Look right? Look at me doting on which my is, wife. And look, it's, it feels good. Yeah. Every man should do it, even if it's a five dollar sweatshirt, sure, right? Sure, you sure. want it, baby? You got it. Got it. I like that sweatshirt. Right. I mean, it's a little bit weird to wear, like at the bus stop, because it says "sin, uh, repent, repeat." Assassination of savages. Yeah, National like it's a, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's aggressive for sure. But I like the cut of it. It's so comfortable. But I definitely sometimes forget that I'm wearing it. I know. It. <laughs> I know. I, I, uh, that happened to me in an airport. I was wearing uh, one of the Black Rifle coffee t-shirts that uh, had the guns. It was just the yeah. it was guns for an American flag. I've done the hat sometimes in weird and situations. It was, it, it, it was right after a school shooting. And uh, I didn't know. Oh. You know, I was just flying to somewhere else. Sure. Grabbed a t-shirt and threw it on. Sure. And uh, this woman came up to me. And she was like, why would you wear that? You know, whatever. And I was like, oh, it's actually a T-shirt for a veteran coffee company or whatever. Right. And uh, she was like, oh. And I was like, ugh, ugh bye. Look. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know. And I, I there was a story of um, uh, Halle Berry in Atlanta uh, when I was a kid. She was dating uh, or married to David Justice, who played for the Atlanta Braves. Mm -hmm. And she went to a event in Atlanta wearing a naughty by nature jacket that just said, uh, "Proud to be a fucking ghetto ass bitch" or something like that. Oh. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you just forget sometimes. Well, that's what she said, and I remember the uproar in Atlanta in the newspaper and in the press where they were like, "You don't forget something like that," blah blah blah. And it's like, you do. Ah, eh, you do. You do. You do. Remember um, when Melania wore that thing that just said, "I don't really care." Or and you think that was an accident? I do. Um, I do. I don't think her English is that great. Um, I think she maybe gets dressed, so whoever gave it to her knew what they were doing. Nah. Maybe. Maybe. I don't even think she puts on like her shoes by herself. Do you know what I mean? <sighs> she's too hot, I think it's too. Like, when you're that hot, you don't have to do anything. You think she's super hot, huh? You've, you've met her. I mean... It's cra it's kind of crazy, definitely right? She's stunning. She's stunning for sure. Yeah, but she's not, not my... an older white. When we had this, we had this. Uh... She's European. Yeah, exactly, exactly. She's got she's a, like a an tan, olive... like an she's olive skin. She's something like an olive skin. Yeah, whatever that is. Uh, you and I had this conversation last night um, about like uh, hotness and how long that lasts. Where you're just oh, like, oh yeah, uh, God. How long it lasts or how, how Yeah, quickly... how long it lasts where you're just like, oh, that person's, I can't have a conversation with that person. Right. And this came up when we were watching the, the bonus episode of The Bachelor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because I have been a long um, Pilot Pete denier. 
I don't know why he was picked. I hate him. No, I hate him. I always have. I've been getting texts from both friends and then messages from fans that are like, we're so sorry. Both, I'm sorry, both friends? You may have two friends? Both from friends IRL and mm, then friends mm, on mm, mm, mm. Instagram. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. <laughs> um, that uh, they're so sorry. <laughs> they doubted me. They're on my team now. Uh, one of the girls in the neighborhood, yeah, one you, of our you friends, called it from the get-go. Was like, I it. feel so stupid right now. Like, yeah. how was I so blinded by the pilot uniform? Yeah, like they were just like, I was, I was blind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Welcome. You called it. You did. You called it. Sometimes call it with people. Call it judgmental. Call it like, but I what what you will. What once you know we were watching it and I, I'm not a fan of this season. Not because of Pete. I just they, they picked the wrong batch of women all those girls fucking suck except for kelly the normal lawyer right chick. and she's gonna be leaving us which is is that do you know that for a fact or no um i don't but there's no way that she can stick around i i hope for her dignity yeah that she continues on the path that she's on which won't be giving him enough because they need to cry, they need to like bend over backwards, they need to freak out, they need to jump up into his arms and wrap their legs around him, and she yeah. just doesn't do that shit. I, I look, I don't mind talking about this with you because after we talked about it on the last season, I had so many dudes message me and they were like, "Dude, I, I I'm stuck watching this with my wife, and now I'm into it." So like, I'm into it. I'm fully invested, and, I, and I'm here with it. This is the first time I can remember in watching all of this shit with you where first of all all the girls suck you don't have a front for runner uh, well, here's the thing you should if you're not a fucking idiot like pete's a goddamn idiot that's why i don't like this either same with colton pete's an idiot if you're looking at this season right mm -hmm. the, it, it is clearly kelly and no one else if you're looking to get married have a genuine relationship have, have kids with life. somebody yeah. have a great life with somebody who's got a great job who doesn't want to be on camera you can tell she really doesn't give a fuck about being famous or, or the limelight. Like, she hides herself in shots mm -hmm. like a professional, where you're just like, oh shit, have you been acting for years? Because you're literally finding the angle or be and like then hiding in the background so they, they can't catch any reactions from you. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah. The way she's or played cocktail this. parties. Like, she just won't be anywhere and then she'll like just show up at the rose ceremony and you're like, were you like napping in a trailer somewhere? Like, yeah. Maybe. It's great. And, you know, I think her comments when they had that dinner, when he was just like, oh, are you going to, um, are you going to open up to me? Are you going to do this? And, and she was just like. I think like, she like read him and he was like, oh, he's like, oh, okay. She freaked yeah. him out. She goes, look, man. She's like, you're rewarding drama. I don't fucking like it. And I don't think you're ready. And he's like, oh, oh, oh. It was the, and, like, and it was the honest truth. He like seized out. And yeah. she goes, she goes, look, man, I'm looking for somebody to be a power couple in this life with and get married and, and you know, two people who have great jobs and do shit together. Not fucking dote over some crying 22 year old who's a model maybe for mm -hmm. of what, though? I don't like kids. She's shoes. turning out to be the funniest, like everything she says, like the grandma thing. I don't know. She's great. I love her. She's not going to win. It's a shame. So but dumb. this is the show. She's great. Um, what I will say is we did a sex episode on the broettes, just kind of like questions that girls you asked. Took questions? Or, took questions mm -hmm. and um, kind of expanded on topics that were sent to us for Drinking Broettes podcast. Yeah. And one of the things was like, hey, guys, watch The Bachelor or Bachelorette yeah. with your wife. You'll probably get laid if you do. Nothing sexier, nothing that like brings us closer is like, oh my gosh, like you're watching it with us. I even suggested it last night. I said, hey, there's a, there's a bonus episode of The Bachelor. You want to watch it tonight? I know. And I was like. Yeah. And I, not to get too intimate, but look. Yeah. Worked out. Worked out for everyone. <laughs> Am I wrong? No, you're not. You're not. So, but anyways, it's just a very, it's an easy gesture, right, guys? That like you could just try it and you might. You might be into it a little bit. You might get invested. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I Don't mean, start now. You'll hate it. But be, maybe next season. Well, I think it depends on where you're at in your life and, and like what your relationship is like in this life, right? Because I look at it where I consider myself in a great relationship and I'm happy and all that shit, right? Um, and you're also with Besides me. yelling at each other at work occasionally. 
you know, because we work together, right? Nothing you can do about that. Sure. For real. Yeah. Like, that's just, I mean, we're not yelling at each other. Eh, honest talk. Jamie's heard it before. I don't give a shit. I'm um, okay. a producer, and it's like, okay. it happens. You're going to have fights because you work together, and it's like, it's tough sometimes, right? But other than that, we don't fight in real life. We don't have any other fights in, in real life pretty much, right? Yeah. Um, and when I'm watching this season and with this that one particular girl, and I'm like, man, you dumb fuck. Do you know how easy your life would be and how great it would be if you just picked the right person? And that's the way I felt about last year, too, with that dipshit where it was just like Colton. Hannah B, even. I was just like, what are you doing, dude? Hannah what B, fuck are you doing, your Hannah favorite, B? was an indecisive, yes. blind yep. weirdo. Yeah. She's my favorite. And I think if you would have caught her maybe three years later, how old is she? I think if you would have caught her at 28. 20. I don't know how old she is, but. I think she's, she was 23, 24 when right. she was doing it. So. I think if you would have caught her at like 28. Be a different story. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's why I hate this season where I'm, I'm watching this and I'm like, Man, all the dumb shit that is going on, all the crying. You know who isn't? The one girl who's a fucking high-powered attorney in Chicago. That's the other thing. I look at cities, too. Right? Because I've traveled so much around the country. I look at cities of like, all right, Chicago. Come on, dude. Great town. Great fucking town. Totally. What are you You've doing? You've got to have a certain level of something i don't know je ne sais quoi something something right yeah you have to have a certain level of something to live and work in chicago that's all i'm gonna say it, in the city. a lot of these when they when they go to hometowns right when they take them back to meet their parents and that's towards the end for you non-bachelor watchers they take them to, back to their parents house and it's like oh uh, we're in fucking um sticksville alabama and we're here with you know and i'm like bro and they like take them into the trailer and you're like that's gonna be your thanksgiving yes i think that every time where I'm like, that's your fucking Thanksgiving, bro. So no matter how hot or you think she is and she's 22 or whatever, first of all, that's not going to last with a 22-year-old one. Two, enjoy your Thanksgiving in that double wide. You know? When you're taking a, like, 18 relatives are taking Bic lighters to the turkey because there is no gas left, you know, in the propane. Or they try and fry a turkey. Whatever, man. Without thawing it. It's a whole... It's a whole mess the rest of your life. And I don't think you think about that at an early age. I waited until, purposely waited until 30s to get married. You know, I've had this conversation before because it was, you know, some, some hardcore bros sat me down and said, hey, man, who we're older and we're like, here's why. And they were fucking right. Because what you want at 23 or what you think is cool and is going to work is not going to work in your 30s where you're like, oh, man. And you look at that of like their, their parents and the, the whole shit and where you've got to spend holidays and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeesh. You know? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's important. And I see Peter right now and he's fucking blowing it. He really is. But don't they always? We'll see. I just because there's one there's been one clip that they're showing over and over again. And, and it's Peter crying on the bed. With a towel on his head mm -hmm. going, uh, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. I can't believe and it. And then this, uh, then the mom, a clip of his mom saying, she's crying. Peter, bring her home to us. Oh, oh, oh. That tells me. Go get our girl. Yeah, that tells me that it's definitely not Ooh. Kelly because it's like, you wouldn't do that. She wouldn't do that. She'd be like, bro, I'm right here. It, it, yeah, uh, you know? not Kelly. I, I think I would have gotten a spoiler that if it was Hannah. Um, Look, so I don't know. If that's the, 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 the twist at the end of this, that he ends up with Hannah B and that's the girl he wants her to bring back, great. I'm all with that. And sure. then I'll enjoy Then Then this entire season wouldn't have been worth it. But the rest of these clown dicks that are on these girls, Jesus Christ. Can't, I can't stand any of them. Right. So, you know, if you're a dude out there and you're wondering what my hot take is on The Bachelor this year, that's it right there. Sure. Uh, you're looking to get married? It's Kelly. Looking for a fucking crazy time where you might get killed? Take that blonde girl. The, blonde girl. With the, the one who just keeps crying. Oh, the she, weird no. She's going to kill someone someday. It's going to be a you situation. She cries a lot. Oh, God. It's going to be a you sitch. Uh, speaking of you. Second season, you weren't in initially. I'm in. 
I think I'm in now. We got and one you episode guys know left. If anybody watched it, you know. You. Everybody watches that show. Okay. Are you saying no, they don't? Uh, not this season, but yeah, I think they should. It, it, man, I, look, it already got it got renewed after the the second show. Clearly, the ratings were through the roof. Sure. So they've already picked up a third season, and uh, I, after the second ep or whenever it dropped, it was like two days later. They were like, "Great, we're picking it up." Yeah. So enough people binged it that they were like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, yeah, dude. Um, and it was it was slow goings for a little bit. Now it's uh, it's really ramped up. One episode left, and I'm amped about it. I like that forty character guy. I didn't like him at the beginning. Hated him. And he's it's been really fucking. He's one funny. of my favorites now. Yeah. One of my favorites. That guy too. I think the actor I didn't really love either at first, and now I'm like, you're really fucking funny. Actually, he's really good. Yeah, he's really talented. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm in. I'm into it. I man, we've had we had the writer on the show, Carolyn uh, Kepnes, mm-hmm. um, the author of the books on uh, Ross Patterson Revolution, and the pressure she must be under is enormous, man. Because. The, the second season just starts two days later. You get renewed, and it's just like, oh, fuck. I owe another book. Yeah, Real because quick. this one was based on Hidden Bodies, mm-hmm. which I didn't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought it was like just a, an extension of you. No. Mm. So, and the third one is based on the third book. Okay. So. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a lot of pressure on a writer where you're like, hey, cool, man. Yeah. Because a book is different than a, you know. A series where you're just like, yeah, you can write a, you can write a series, and you have a team of writers that can write a series. But uh, if it's based on a book, you got to get that book out there first. So uh, I'm amped either way to see what happens. But whew, that's a lot of pressure, Jabe's. A lot of pressure. Um, want to hop into uh, the the jobs here? The jobs report just just broke. We taped this show on Fridays for the Monday app so we can spend some time with the kids on the weekends. Mm-hmm. Um, so we don't know the Oscars yet, obviously. Oh, that's right. It's on, on Sunday night. Uh, we don't know the winners of that yet, although I picked them all yesterday. Um, I mean, I did. I, if you're, should, should I just run through that list real quick um, at home? If people are betting on this, because everybody's in a pool and I win every single year. Um, I'm sure. Un- and then, Jamie, do you mind making note of everyone he picked? Oh, I thought you had like a pen or something. Yeah, do you have a pen? I got one. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, you ready? I'm ready. All right. Uh, this is for anybody at home who just wants to win their. Oh, shit. This doesn't air until. Fuck, man. This doesn't air until, until Sunday night at 8 with the start of it. All right. Well, I'd say what? When this airs, you'll be driving to work, and you'll know if I was right or wrong. And I'll breeze through them real quick. You ready? At least you'll know how great I am. Is everybody here's all the Don't legends of my sports show like, and all that he shit? He recorded it Monday and just told us that he didn't. There's no way of no. proving it. Okay. Oh, no way of proving it. Uh, yes, yes, there is. Okay. Yeah, I'll hold. I'll hold up my iPhone. Here, it's a camera. <laughs> um. So stupid. It's 12.09. We're recording this at 12.09. Don't show anybody's number that's Friday, on there. there. There's nobody's phone number. Um, Friday, February 7th, 12.09. Boom. Um, I get like a million text messages. but uh, so. Did you see it in camera? Yeah, it's good you enough. Saw the- Somebody can pan into it, you know? Yeah, but if, they, if you really wanted to prove it, yeah. 12.09, Friday, February 7th is when we're recording. Ready? All right, I'll breeze through it here. Best picture, 1917. Okay. Um, Best director is going to be San Mendes of 1917. Best actor is going to be Joaquin Phoenix. Best actress is going to be Renee Zellweger. Best supporting actor is going to be Brad Pitt. Best supporting actress is going to be Laura Dern. Original score. Screenplay, I'm going to go with uh, Quentin Tarantino, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Adapted screenplay. I'm going to go with Jojo Rabbit on this one for adapted screenplay. Um, International feature, which is best foreign film. I'm going to go with Parasite. Bong Jong, your bong guy. 
Bong you, you love? Bong. Jun, ju, what? Bong Joon Ho. Bong Joon Ho. Uh, animated feature. I'm going to go with uh, Missing Link. Although I want it to be Toy Story 4. Uh, but I'm going to go with Missing Link on this one. Uh, documentary, I'm going to go with uh, American Factory. Simply because the Obamas produced it and no one kisses the Obamas' ass more than fucking Hollywood. Uh, visual effects. I'm going to go with uh, 1917. Uh, film editing. I'm going to go with uh, Ford versus Ferrari. Did you stop writing? Yeah. Oh, come on, James. Uh, original score. I'm going to go with um, the Joker on this one. Mm, over what? Um, another one. Little Women's in this category, Marriage Story, 1917, and Star Wars. 1917, I'm going to pick. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say the Joker just because it was cool. Uh, I think everybody remembers that infamous scene, um, put on a happy face. That was an original score, but. Oh, no, no, no. You're right. You're right. Shit. That's a lot different than. Yes, it is. Music uh, supervisor. You're right. Um,. Think about it. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with it, actually. I'm going to stick with Joker for original score. Okay. Uh, Original song. I'm going to go with uh, Stand Up from Harriet. Yeah. Um, Because that that chick's not going to win for playing Harriet Tubman, and they've got to give her something. So I think they're going to give her that. Production design. um, I'm going to go with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Cinematography. I'm going to go with 1917 and Roger Deakins. Uh, Costume design. Man, I think they're going to give it to Little Women on this one just because they, it, it won't win anything. Um, but it probably should be Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, makeup and hair, I'm going to go with Bombshell just because they, that dude made Homegirl look like fucking Megyn Kelly and it was incredible. Uh, sound mixing, I'm going to go with um, 1917. Sound editing, I'm going to go with Ford versus Ferrari. Aren't they always the same? No, they're different. Occasionally. Occasionally. They feel bad giving it to the same person because it's the same team usually. So, uh, And then a- animated shorts and all that bullshit. We don't do shorts on the show. Like that's, um, that's fucking dumb. Anybody who tells you they know what they are does, does not. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. If you're driving to work and you're like, holy shit, Ross got them all. Don't be surprised. I get them, all, I get them right every year. I miss probably two on average every year. That's are you missing it. two this year? Probably, and it'll it'll be something weird like sound editing or something. Like, it won't be any of the majors. It won't be any of the major categories. It happens every year, um, and every year I get fucking the same thank yous because I usually write it on my Facebook posts of like, "Hey, here here's you can win all your fucking things," and everybody's like, "Dude, I win every year." Um, I post it every single year on my Facebook page, so pretty confident in it. And it's all about because it's all about campaigns. Doesn't really have to do too much with the movies, to be honest with you. Mm. So, um, yeah, I, that it's it's like politics, man. So you know, good luck. Uh, speaking of politics, Trump capping off an amazing week. My God, man! Jobs report came out today. Okay, they were expecting uh, 158 thousand jobs added to uh, the job market. Added 225 thousand. I mean. That is through the fucking roof. Wages are up 13% or 16%. I'm sorry. I mean, fuck. I don't know how you beat them. I don't know how you beat them. Um, so much so that it's, it's Friday. There is a, I guess there's a debate tonight. A democratic debate. I know. I saw that and I was like, huh? between who? Everybody? I guess. Everybody's everybody's in it, so Bloomberg it's going to be getting from up there. Who's up there? It's going to be from New Hampshire, and I have not heard one word about it because Trump is just smashing everything this week. It's the greatest week in his life. It has to be. Uh, so it says they're preparing for a fiery debate. Who's on the stage? Oh, that's right, because you still don't have a winner between Sanders is declaring victory so in that it's... Iowa thing. You still don't have a winner in Iowa. So him and Buttigieg are going to go at it. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the first time ever, you do have 
somebody proclaiming a victory in a primary. Therefore, everybody else is going to go after Buttigieg. Mm -hmm. Um, Right now, because New Hampshire is on Monday, I believe, Mm -hmm. their uh, primary. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're predicting Biden to be fourth in that, and he could be out of the race in less than four weeks. That's really shocking. Mm-hmm. I thought he was. Th- I thought he was the dude, man. I thought he was going to win. Well, because that's that's who they wanted. That's who the establishment wanted. He could have been. And they're saying Buttigieg is pulled even in New Hampshire, which would be shocking if that happens and he wins. Whew, boss. Um, all right, Tom Steyer is still in it. What? Andrew Yang is still in it. Really. He's going to be in the debates tonight. Good. Uh, Four-day work week. So, yeah. Sanders, um, Buttigieg. What? I'm into it. <laughs> yeah. Who isn't? Exactly. <laughs> Come make that happen, homeboy. Um, Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, Klobuchar is still in it. Oh, precious. I know. I, you know, she finished I like ahead her. of Biden. I'm just saying. I know I like her. It's just. She was, uh, no, she was right behind Biden in, yeah. the, in the thing. Not bad. Biden was at 16%. She was at 13 and she doesn't have anywhere near the name recognition he does. It's true. It's not bad. Um, I don't think she's a terrible person. No, I'm saying I don't, I, I I think, don't mind her. But, you know, when we, were watching, Karen. when we were watching the caucus, I know, it's rough. Yeah. Uh, when we were watching the caucus and people were like, well, I would vote for her, but I don't think she's going to have enough. And it's like fucking there was a lot of people who said that i know but like mentality like that Mm -hmm. is why someone like that you like is never going to be elected if more people if everyone says i'm not going to vote for them because i don't think they're going to win yeah they won't win yeah yeah, yeah. anyway go ahead so yeah i that was buried man if that if we weren't doing a podcast right we weren't doing a show every day and i read the news every single day and all this shit i would have no idea not only that, if you're the Democrats, why would you schedule a debate on a Friday night? Like, I'm going to be watching a movie with our kid tonight. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, it's Friday. Yeah. Like, if it was during the week, great. All right. Like, there's exactly. nothing on network television anymore that's worth shit. Mm-hmm. I'll pa- I, you know me. I always pop it on, right? Oh, yeah. I, every single debate, Republican or Democrat, I want to know what the fuck's going on in the world, yeah. right? Or and what depending on how late or... it is, I just watch it the next morning. That's yeah, just yeah. like how it goes. <laughs> So, but on a Friday night, who's going to be watching that? It's going to be about three people. Usually, and there's an NBA game on a Friday night that usually dominates, you know, whatever's going on. So, uh, that's a terrible time to have it, especially you don't even have a winner from Iowa. I wonder if Bernie says something to him on the stage tonight. About what? Hey, I won. I'm the, re- I'm the one uh, who won. He'll definitely address it. For sure he'll address it. I don't know if he'll address it directly at him <laughs> man right he could um but uh yeah I, look and, and they're you know one of the top headlines for this is they were like dude biden is gone missing like i haven't seen him on any news outlets anything this week nothing he's been completely silent during all of this is he alive barely at this point mm. um but i look i looking at these numbers now uh, now that they're in front of my my peepers here, I I think he's out after Super Tuesday. I think he's out after March third. He's gone. I don't think financially and and all that other stuff. I think he's gone. Um, and you're probably looking at a three horse race then between Buttigieg, mm-hmm. Warren, and mm-hmm. Sanders. Yeah, Oof. have fun with it, kids. Rough. Have fun. That's crazy, isn't it? No way would like I remember at the beginning of this. I just wish there was more moderate people in them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember at the beginning of this where I said, uh, I think it's gonna be Biden, you know, um eventually in the end. It's like and I mean look, remember when it very first started? The the favorite and you know, Vegas wise, because you know, one of my sponsors on um Drinker Bros Sports is mybookie.com. Uh at promo code Drinking Bros doubles your deposit. The reason why I'm telling you this is you can bet on politics. You can bet on people dying in shows and all this other shit. And like, so we had put money on who we thought was going to win. And the, uh, uh, we read the odds to the audience when this all started, when the field was, everybody was announcing. And the favorite at that time was, um, oh, who's the chick? Kamala Harris. Mm-hmm. 
she was she was in the one spot. Biden was in the two spots when when the odds first opened up, and then I think it was Elizabeth Warren, and then Bernie, and then Buttigieg was in fifth. And like now, Kamala's not even in it. Mm. Biden is on his last legs, last leg, or legs. I don't know. He might he might lose both of his legs. <laughs> but he's almost out. Like, what a shocker! What a shocker! So it could be Burn Dog. Okay, we'll see. Who do you get? Who do you got here now? What now do you this mean? is starting to shake out. Who do I have? Yeah, who do you think's gonna win? Trump. No, uh, oh, Democratic the primary. Side. Yeah, de- Democratic. Side. I yeah, we all have Trump. Um, I don't know. I mean, Buttigieg. Uh, is very surprising to me that he's as high as he is. I don't know what happened. I, I don't either. Because I feel like he just was at 2%, like not even that long ago. So Strange. Um, I don't know if someone has propped him up because um, Bernie and Warren are doing so well and someone got scared that yeah. someone in the Democratic Party, right? Mm-hmm. Whoever the the big fucking wizard of Oz is behind the curtain, which there is one. Yes. And a bunch, Mm -hmm. um, kind of like prayer, prayer breakfast type of stuff. Right. Uh, someone propped him up. Someone gave him a bunch of money. Someone, I don't know, but, uh, because I think ultimately they, the democratic party would be scared if Bernie or Warren were elected. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so if they were representing, they were the party, really yeah. trying to make Biden happen, but he just shot himself. Yeah, in the wiener. <laughs> That's what people do, right? When they have guns in their pocket. Yeah, he shoots himself in the wiener. He shot himself in the wiener. So uh, they really, really wanted to make that happen because they wanted a Democrat, but they didn't really want her. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. They didn't really want the craziness, but they wanted Trump out. Yeah. But they just can't fucking get it together. No. I mean, the Iowa caucus is just a, um, what happened with the Iowa caucus is uh, just a metaphor and projection of their whole campaign so far. Mm -hmm. Uh, As Um, far as Democrats are concerned. But I don't really have much... um, I don't know. I really don't. Speaking of which, uh, they are now, this is breaking news right now. They're, they are actually, Democrats are calling uh, for the head of the DNC to get fired. They're asking for Tom Perez. It's not going to do anything, but go ahead. step down. Uh, but dude, you're in the middle of an election. Like, I know. What are you doing? What are you doing? Like, <laughs> yeah. you just cannot get it together. Jesus Christ. You are shooting, all of you are shooting yourselves in the wiener. <laughs> Again, I think that's the same. Wow. But all of you are just shooting yourselves in the weeder. You're can- you're cannibalizing. You're eating each other alive. You're ruining. I mean, when I saw the 60 Minutes interview with Biden, 60 Minutes is, you know, pretty left. Not super left, but yeah. they're leaning. Yeah, they have yeah, some yeah, yeah. leanings. Yeah. Um, and the way that they just went after Biden. We talked about that on the show, remember? Yeah. Uh, that was the beginning of, of the end of me kind of, I guess, caring. Cause I'm just like, you guys are just, um, I said it on broettes too. Like, this is the last thing I'm going to say politically right now, uh, is I go back and forth with Trump, right? Like I have, I don't really talk about how I feel politically. You definitely do. Everyone yeah, yeah. else kind of does. I don't really, um, but I will say <clears throat> after the State of the Union, my theory, I think, might be true, which is I think that Trump set out to show everyone what really goes on in politics. Mm-hmm. That was his, I think that was his goal. The way that he's doing it is poking the bear, mm-hmm. forcing people to show they're crazy and the way that you do that is like write outrageous things tweet outrageous things Mm -hmm. be outrageous because you know 
that it will make people like, for example, Nancy Pelosi rip up speeches and just go crazy. And it's like the advice that I give to anyone that's like, oh, this person's like, or this guy is texting me or a girl is texting me something crazy. I always say just do not respond for a day. Like let them text you, go over what they texted you, go crazy about it, text you something else, tell you they're blocking you, not blocking you. And they will like spin out into a crazy fucking, into the crazy universe. Sure. So I really think either I've always thought like either he is a genius right or he's a piece of shit asshole right <laughs> these are the two things right uh, yeah, either I, everything that he's doing has an end game which i'm starting to see uh-huh it's starting to come together where he for the most part keeps a level head uh he says crazy stuff but he never goes crazy Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He never raises his voice, curses, says any like that. Right. He stays pretty level and pretty confident. And then he lets everyone else spin out and be crazy around him. Yeah. So I don't know. Somebody said last night that he loves the chaos and he works best in it and thrives in it. I know people like that. And I, I don't know I if that's say, what it is. Eh, maybe. Maybe. I don't know what that, if that's what it is. But I'm saying if you look at his tweets or you look at things that he says and you just go, oh, I like him, but I just like hate what he says, right? Uh, yeah. I think maybe he's doing, the, he's doing that on purpose because it really is busting doors open, busting, like letting you behind the curtain of things that have been going on for years with uh, elected officials that you thought really had you in mind. Elected officials and and a, a political whatever, landscape or whatever, that you thought was actually working for you. Yeah. Like you thought when you elected someone back in the day, yeah. before Trump, yeah. you thought they really were like, what can I do for the people? And now you know that that's, Absolutely not the case. Right? Yeah. Um, it's, it's all strange, but it's, all, it's also what I voted for. Like, initially, I was I just like, yeah, and man, I, I want somebody in there to expose whatever it is. And, to expose and, it. And see what it's really like and, and have people fucking go crazy. Um, because I, I am tired of the same old politics, right? Um, like, I don't want anything, I don't want anyone to get hurt. I don't want anyone to lose their job because of this. I don't want anyone to lose, for example, women's, like, re- reproductive rights and stuff like this. I don't want any of that. Right. You know what I mean? But I'm not sure if that even has happened. Like, all the things that we were so scared of. I, yeah. I I'm, not sure. I I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I haven't sure. seen it. Um, I'm just saying, like. But going back to like the point of them eating their own, I forgot to tell you, I was watching, uh, I was flipping through the channels last night, bored. Um, Rachel Maddow was on last night with the, the, that Tom Perez and the head of the DMC. Oh, okay. She was even railing on him of like, but for low voter turnout, not, you know, I mean, the caucus was a disaster, but like low voter turnout. Look. I don't know why that's his fault because, you know, these candidates are uninspiring. So. That's kind of who you're left with. Like, you know, fuck, man. You had three years to pull it together and you didn't. I don't know what else to say at that point. Yeah, um, yeah but politically, you know, we don't have to fucking chat about it anymore. I want to give a quick update on um, this Gail King thing. Um, yeah, what's happening with that? So Oprah just came out and released a statement maybe an hour ago and said that she's not, Gail King is not doing well. She's getting death threats from this Kobe interview. Um, hey, man. You ask the questions. Again, I said this on the, the last show. You ask the fucking questions. If, if you don't want the blowback from it, don't ask. Um, it's true. You know. It's true. Is it a part I of a bigger interview? Yeah, it is. It. Yeah. I wish you would have said, and like um, people that are defending her are saying, she's a journalist. She needs to ask all different sides of the yep. story. She has to. And so I wish she would have just would have stood by it. Because the thing of like, I'm blaming the network and da da da, like you said it, you mm-hmm. asked it, you wanted to know. Yeah. And it was part of your big interview. So, you know. 
Um, they were making a big deal of this John Mayer thing, by the way. Uh, on uh, uh, your girl Jessica Simpson was on yesterday. Uh huh. I forgot she dated John Mayer. Yeah, and she does like a big thing about it. We they talked were, about it. W- we did, right? Um, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I I was getting it confused with Jennifer Aniston. Do you remember? He dated her as well. Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. And he was sending out all those weird tweets, and that's that was kind of the end of him. I got I got the two of them mixed up, and then I was like, "Holy shit!" There was a thing last night on TMZ where they he was at the same restaurant with Jennifer Aniston. They were like, "Ooh, weird encounter!" Oh, running with I an ex on accident. F- completely forgot. So did I. About but that. remember, they dated for like two years, and he was writing all these weird tweets and shit about like no. things they did and everything. And she got sick of it, and she was just like, "Hey, bro, I- I'm." not a social media person like can you stop tweeting out like shit we're doing all the time i forgot about that wow and then i was like fuck man mayor was just such what a what did you out. call her jay anus you called her jennifer aniston and i'm disappointed well because you. you refused to acknowledge jay anus i said it to you oh last so night. i win I said thank it to you. you last night and uh you were not having it and i was like you know i knew to get your attention today i say jennifer aniston <laughs> but i love jay anus a lot and um, yeah, but anyways, because I thought that's who they were talking about, and then I was like, "Wait a minute, fuck, man! I forgot he dated both of them." He's dated a lot of people. Everyone. He's dated a lot of people. I think you'd be like, "Oh yeah," with a lot of people. Was it, did he date Katy Perry too? I think so. Um, maybe not that. Um, not Perry, but definitely T Swifty. Remember? That's right, man. Swifty and like random. I mean, Poonhound. Maybe it was Katy Perry. Boonhound. Boonhound. I look. I just going through his history. Holy shit, man. That's crazy to me. That's absolutely crazy to me. He's got a hog on him though. I will say that. And how do you know and how do you know this? Used uh I used one of his nude pictures. Um there's a picture of of uh him uh taking a piss and I used it in the We Are All Harambe video. Oh, and that's I had to block right. it out. He's got a fucking hammer on him. I mean, it's a two-hander, that guy. Um, so. Taylor Swift, mm-hmm. Minka Kelly, Katie. No Perry. way, Minka Kelly? Katy Perry. Shit. Um, that is a murder's row. Yeah, murder's row. Uh, yeah, Jennifer Aniston, Jessica Simpson, Kim Kardashian. Um, really? Colby Calais? Oh, you, your buddy. My buddy, Colby Calais. You did, Colby? What up? Ooh, Ask her about know. his fucking hammer then. I'm good, but thank you. Mm. Thank you. I'll give props to where they're due. If somebody's slanging. Sure. Slanging an ocho, let him, let him fucking, let it breathe. I told you David Spade's got a hog on him too. You did. So, man, Colby Calais, huh? Interesting. Yeah, he's a fucking poon hound, dude. I, I bet she's a lot of a coup around the house. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I bet he has picking his, up the guitar, you know, his go tos. Yeah, yeah, tip, yeah. His tricks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Man, that is a crazy murderer's row. Minka Kelly. Which one's she? Who's she? She from? was from Friday Night Lights. Minka Kelly. Um, man, she dated uh, Jared Jeter for a very long time. Oh. Sorry. What song are you playing there? I wasn't playing a song. I was playing. Oh I was going to an article, but it ended up being a Jesse YouTube the video Jesse of the all his girlfriends. Uh, so Minka Kelly was in Friday Night Lights, which was one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Love Friday Night Lights. And uh, you picked a side in that. You're on the Adrian Pilecki side, or Paladecki, or however the fuck you pronounce your last name. Or you were on the Minka Kelly side. Got it. Blonde hair girl versus tall blonde versus the short brown haired girl. And, uh, Got it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then Derek Jeter. Yeah, they dated for years. And I guess he didn't want to get married. Got it. Got it. Got it. He didn't want to get married. And she was just like, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this bullshit anymore. And he did get married. He did. Yeah. Who was it? Was it a, it was a just Sports a, Illustrated model, yeah, right? Yeah, just a rando model. I mean, hot. Hannah something. Yeah. Hot, but. Yeah. Um, I wonder if your dad's pissed about his Hall of Fame thing. We've been talking about it this week on Drinking Bro Sports. About him not getting in? No, he got in. Uh-huh. But there was only one writer. It was first-time ballot. There was only one writer 
who voted no. So therefore, he could have been the, the second unanimous pick mm. of all time. And one writer held out, and they held out privately. And we're trying to out this motherfucker on Drinking Bro Sports. And, Is it uh, a girl? We don't know. Probably. It's private. He we probably got know. that care package that he would send gals home with. Do you think he boned a writer? Because that's who it is. It's, you know, it's, it's a lot of sports writers. You think he boned a writer and she For was just sure. like. For sure. <laughs> Talk about and the ultimate payback. that's the kind of payback. stuff that's going to come back to get you. That's the ultimate payback, though. Uh-huh. If it's a girl. I didn't even think about that. That's great. Mm-hmm. Oh, I hope that's true. And good for her. Because I said my prediction was it was a Red Sox writer, like a beat writer for the Red Sox. But I mean, but you. Yeah. Red Sox have given, given up, by the way. The monster trade traded fucking David Price and Mookie Betts. They're, they're done. Mm-hmm. They're trying to save money now. The Yankees have only gotten stronger. It's going to be a good year for you and your dad. You and your padre. Padre. Uh, we got some sponsor shapes to pay for this show. You and me just rapping like two little peas in a pod all day. <laughs> Not even talking about our sponsors. Talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. 25% off everything in the store. For the presidents. They're not fucking leaving. They're not fucking leaving, dude. Mm-hmm. That sale is going on for like a month. Yeah. Presidents, yeah, till March 3rd. President's Day. Uh, my birthday. Your birthday. Oh, all the way through there. All the way through. Everyone's birthdays. Yep. This is going through all of February. Uh, I don't need to say any, any other promo codes. I don't need to do that. I can tell you you can get the mat- best mattress on the planet for 25% off. Best sheets, best adjustable base, best pillows. I can tell you all of that. Best, and I'm going to say best and most affordable uh, adjustable base. Oh, yeah. Big, big fan. I don't want to call anybody out, but Ashley Furniture and Rooms to Go, their bases start at fucking 1800 And they're shitty. Just saying. Uh, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Get it. The beauty of the 25% off sale there is uh, you still get the, the 36 month page you go program with it. It knocks that shit down to like 20 bucks a month, man. If you need a mattress or pillows or whatever, man, get it now because uh, while the getting's good, because brother, it doesn't get any better than that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Uh, next up, we get strikeforceenergy.com. Boom, 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 boom. Shabloinker. Four amazing flavors. You'll be drinking them all day Sunday because you're you're in a rib cook-off, which we're going to get to right after the sponsors. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride you a little bit. I'm going to get on it, my pony. I'm going to ride you like a pony um, right after the sponsors are over, James. <laughs> Gross. Yeah, genuine style. Ew, 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 <laughs> ew, ew, ew. Um, strike force energy, no carbs, no sugars. Gluten-free, ladies. For those of you who can't do whatever that means um, in your b-hole. Doesn't it mean like you're going to shit your pants or something like that? Like you, you, Gluten you, allergy? Yeah. Or celiac? Yeah. Uh, no, you don't. I don't know if you shit your pants, but well, you are. could. You cannot. Your body cannot process gluten. It could. Uh, you. But could you don't have up. to worry about that with Strike Force. And you're right. I am going to be using my magic potion on Sunday, which is black cherry white claw and lemon Strike Force. Yes, 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 yes. Ten pack, forty pack, seven fifty milliliter bottle. Um, look, mine is the grape, dude. Uh, mine's the grape in all this shit. Like, uh, even on KillCliffCBD.com. Um, which is our other sponsor. That grape, grape is, is my jam, your jam. It's my jam. It's also your son's jam. Promo code Drinking Bros for 20% off of them, too. But uh, this is 20% off promo code REVOLUTION at StrikeForceEnergy.com. It is my fucking favorite, dude. Um, using it for years, not going to stop. You can't make me stop. Uh, I go wouldn't. to StrikeForceEnergy.com. Subscription month is where it's at, man. I get a 40-pack sense of the house once a month, and that's it. Boom. I don't have to think about it anymore. Yeah. Lick it. If you haven't tried it before, I suggest using the 20% off on a sample pack. Get hooked and go from there. Yeah. Uh, go to strikeforceenergy.com, promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. Last but not least, straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Tear into it. Um, shaving the mustache off this weekend, I think. Are you? I think so. You don't want you don't want rib sauce all in there. No. Oh God. No. 
No, I don't. It's going to be hard for you to eat all those ribs with that stash. It is. I might give it away. I might give the stash away. I put it in a bag. Oh. Yep. There's a lot of people who want it in a bag just to hang above their room. You know? Glue it onto like a paper <laughs> in a mustache. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> It'd be so fucking funny. Gross. Yeah. It's my real mustache, so and I yeah. glue it. Or I can take an old headshot of mine. Oh yes. And just glue it on the headshot. There you go. Oh, that's so funny. Maybe we'll yes. do it. Maybe we'll do it. Or- uh, straight razors. I'm gonna use that straight razor to do it. Um, their aftershave smolder is the best on the planet. I love or you it. You make love yourself a merkin smolder. Merkin for my my bean bag. Yeah. Just put it over. No, over your um. A merkin is. Yeah, it goes for your the pubes. top. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, for your pubes. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about maybe putting it on my sack, gluing around my sack like a nice Abraham Lincoln beard for President's Day. There you go. You know, it'd be a nice now thing. Now I'm seeing it. Mm-hmm. Four score and seven years ago, and I could give the speech, mm. move my <laughs> penis, put, uh, put a pair of these glasses on it, and move it like a little, you know, little yeah. nose. Uh, Stream Razors loves our reads every time. Every time, don't every they? Every time. Look, uh, they got shampoos, beard oils, conditioners, uh, mustache waxes, you name it. Get it in the bee hole. Go to straightrazors.com. Promo code REVOLUTION 20% off. Um, I'm, I'm going to ride you now. Ew, ew, ew. You said last week you were done. With chili cook-offs, you were done with cook-offs maybe in general chili. for the rest of your life. Chili. Just chili? Because mm-hmm. now, this weekend, you're in a rib cook-off. Because chili is something that I've just never... Like, last year when I got second, that was mm-hmm. the first chili I'd ever made. Mm, okay. Do you know what I mean? It's not my thing. Sure. Um, Cookie contests, baking. Yeah. Um, And now, smoking. Smoking some ribs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not any other meat right now. I think that I've definitely perfected the rib. Your pork butt is really great. I haven't perfected the time and temperature yet. You don't know what time it's done. What I'll tell you, and anyone that smokes meat would know that this is like a cardinal sin, but I I smoked the ribs and the pork butt at the same time, which is insane because they both need different temperatures at different time for different amounts yeah so i was just trying to like do it all together and you cannot do that Mm -hmm. so i haven't yet i've yet to do a pork butt just by itself for the amount of time that it needs which is like 10 hours right yeah um at varying temperatures with like apple cider and all this different stuff so uh i don't feel confident with that when the guy said in the neighborhood when they were like we're doing a rib off i was mm-hmm. like you know what like i feel like i can throw my hat in the ring okay you know I, look i love your ribs they're great they're great um i li- i like that you've moved on to smoking too cuz i enjoy barbecue a lot obviously mm-hmm. and uh you really you're really improving all facets of your cooking game like yeah, you're, you're, once we got that Traeger, it was on. Oh, so on. So um, um, you're good to go. One what time, of the other what people, time do you start that? Tell the audience what time you start that. So, so what, what time's the rib off? What time's the rib the off? The rib off, your ribs need, the rules are your ribs need to be ready to be judged by 530. Okay, so people are eating at 530. Eating at 530. Okay, what time do you have to start those then? I don't want to start them too early or too late. So I think I'm going to do an eight or a nine. Probably do eight if I were you. But you also don't want them to. I, I heard you can't oversmoke it. Is that true? I heard that too. But then I also have been getting messages from people that are actually do competitions, mm-hmm. and the ribs are not actually supposed to fall off the bone. Although that's how I like them. So. Yeah, that's how I like them too. Right. So I don't know. I go. Eight, I heard man. you could just yeah. So I'll do eight. And then I'll maybe let them sit in the apple juice for a little bit longer. All right. Really tenderize them. If, I, if I'm getting to the point where I'm like, they're going to be done and they're just going to be sitting, drying out right, right. before 5.30, right? So that's the other thing about cooking is timing. Okay. You don't ever want your stuff, like one thing to be sitting and like the other thing not ready yet. One thing hot and fresh and the other thing cold. And You know what I mean? Sure, sure, sure. Um, so... 
That is the so, and we all we all got so. Our buddy Nick works at Cisco. Yes. Um, we all got the same kind. Great of ribs. rib. Yep. We all were like given the ribs so that we all had the same. We we're all giving them at the same time. So it's right. like the real deal, yeah, dude. Yeah. So we'll report back to you. How many? Of you, how many of you guys are in it? Um, there is four. Four people. Okay. Mm-hmm. And who who was the who are the people that are judging judging that's what we still don't know because we need it to be random a little bit more random than like wives kids you know what i mean like it can't be like our group you know what i'm saying what are you gonna do bring so like strangers? nick was like maybe he would bring his brother josiah has a rando to bring okay um maybe just trying to invite people that aren't in our circle all the time Okay. And having them just like sit down and do a blind taste. You know, Nick's brother, he owns now a restaurant. That, he owns one of our favorite restaurants. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm down. Don't you think he'll be able to tell which one are his brothers? Would you be able to tell which ones are mine? No. Okay. I don't think so. Uh, well, it depends. Are you using the same rub? As I, ha- as I did last Usually time? Usually you grill your ass off, right? Yeah. yeah. And I... Th- I think I do have the winning combination. I'm not going to use as much as I did last time. I think it was a bit too much rub, but I'm going to use the same combination of two grill your ass off rubs that okay. I mixed together and the same barbecue sauce that I use. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. What? Uh, yeah, look, I love your ribs. They're fantastic. So, I'm amped. Um, might have to take the kids down to the beach or something for the day. So, you get a little crazy. No, I mean... Right before these things, you know? Yeah, I don't know. It brings out a different side of you, Japes. Not with the ribs, though. (laughs) It's Because I don't want to say it's easy, but, like, really with the Traeger, it's not even real smoking, like... It is! Like, me and the other guy that has a Traeger were like, hey, guys, don't wake us up, because we're just going to be napping the whole time. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Because it's like, we could do it from our phone... You know what I mean? We have the pellets. They automatically go in there. Mm-hmm. I feel embarrassed sometimes to be like, oh, I smoke. I'm like smoke meats, you know, because really all I'm doing is working with time. Sure. So time and spices are the only thing that's going to set me apart. Uh, and then one of the guys has like a full on real smoker. Mm-hmm. And then one has an electric smoker. So they're going to be like at their shit all day. And so it's kind of like if I do win, am I going to feel good about it? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Where it's like, we would all have to have the exact same smoker as well. No. I, look, man. Okay. You, you can fuck That's it up. That's true, probably. You can fuck it up. And the you time. You can put it in the oven if you want. Like, time, you can use yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, a Weber. The, the time matters. Time. Um, time and temperature. Because if you fuck up the time. Time, temperature, flavor. Yeah. Because that's what I'm worried, is that you'll fuck up the time. I think you should go I earlier. I don't really care what you think. No, you should. Because. You're not judging. So. Uh, yeah. I'll no, be, you're I'll not. be judging. I will. I, oh, you'll be silently judging me as you always do, but no, you're no, not no. going to be at the judging table. And I'm not going to be at the judging table, no. but I will do this because um, this is what I did in the Nobody chili cook-off. Nobody asked you to do anything. Uh, yes, you did last time. Like, hey, did I have the best chili? You actually did have the best chili. I tasted all the chilies. I tasted all 14 mm-hmm. chilies. I really thought you had the best. Mm-hmm. With the ribs, I'll do the same. I'll have all the ribs, and I'll tell you who the best one was for real. You will be honest. Yeah, I'll always be honest. Yeah. So... But uh, you get a little tense towards the end. Time is usually not your friend in these cooking competitions. That's all I'm going to say. Start Nobody early. Nobody asked you to fucking say anything, dude. Well, I'm going Did to. Did anybody hear me asking what he fucking thought? I'm going to, Jabes. Yeah, we all know how that goes. <laughs> we do. Nobody. Ross telling you exactly what he thinks. Ah, uh, Jesse. Jesse. I don't care. I don't think anybody else cares. It is... It's like Gordon Ramsay at the house, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of swearing, a lot of cursing. Mm-hmm. So try to keep not it to a minimum. This. All right. Not with the ribs. All right. We'll find There's out. There's a lot of downtime with ribs, as you guys know. Three hours of like not doing stuff. Two hours of not doing anything, you know, like okay. it may only be like towards the end of like getting them on the plate cut and getting them over to judging. We'll see. We'll see, Jabes. Uh, time to get to the revolutionary figure of the day. I'm going to give this to you, Jamie. You fuck. Oh. Um, Kirk Douglas. You wanted Kirk Douglas. You're going to get Kirk Douglas today. 
Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so wait, he's the revolutionary figure for wanting Kirk Douglas, and then Kirk Douglas no, is? No, Kirk Douglas is, but okay. uh, <laughs> it was after the last show. You go, hey, man, why wasn't it Kirk Douglas? Like, he you were was like, like, we were like, uh, the last golden age right. movie star there was. He was, and, here, uh, and I'll tell the audience what our debate was about this. He was 103 years old. It is impossible almost for any human to live that long, you know? So when he died, I was just like, well, he's 103, you know? Uh, he probably shouldn't have lived that long. He was in a hel- I remember when he was in a helicopter crash in the 90s. Oh, God, and a stroke? Yes. Oh, yeah. Like the whole thing, and he's lived through everything for... He's 103, and his wife is 100. She's still alive. They've been married for what? What, would they, what did they say, 60 years or 65 years or something last night? And I was like, shit. Yeah. Um, here's my thing. <laughs> here's my thing. And I, you'll know the answer now if you're listening to this on a Monday and watch the Oscars last night. Jesse and I hope they use the young pictures of Kirk Douglas and not... <sighs> The ones where he's fucking stroked out in a wheelchair at like one oh one oh three because it's like he doesn't like, know where he is. He doesn't know no, like what's going I, on. I don't want to like, remember him like that. Do you? Just fucking leave him alone. Bro. Just leave him alone. Give him a just give him a, a pick from Spartacus. You know? Yeah. Um, something. Spartacus interviews where he's being a fucking pimp, like all of that, dude. Because I mean, you go back and maybe like right before. The wheelchair. Yeah. You go back 60 years and that'll put him at 43. Oh, my Lord. Yes. He was still a pimpy fucking dude. Like, oh, for sure. Hardcore pimp. Um, probably into his 70s. Same with, same with his son, Michael Douglas, for Christ's sakes. Right? Oh, yeah. Pimpy dude. Mm-hmm. Both daddies. But all the pictures they keep showing are like these weird... Remember what he had a ponytail? They were showing that last night on Entertainment Tonight. No, and it's like who chose? Like he didn't choose that. No, he didn't want to grow out his hair and put it in a ponytail. He looked like some kind of Dracula type. Um, I just character. don't show any of those pictures at the. Uh, hopefully at the Oscars they will not show that in the in memoriam. You know. Yeah. Um, but again, we talked about this with Kobe. The weird thing about Kobe is when they show his in memoriam because he won an Oscar, so they're going to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be Kobe. Because he's young as fuck, and that's the only memory you have of him. Yep. Is looking pimpy. Now, Kirk Douglas, there's a lot of photos to choose from. Let's choose wisely here. Not the one where he's 103 on stage at the Golden Globes, staring off into the light. Um, it's my only hope. Jamie, you're welcome. This one's for you today, buddy. Okay? KD, Kirk Douglas. Um, it was great. Stop showing old pictures of him, okay? Just his older stop. pictures. Just stop. Just stop. That's just all we stop. ask. Stop. How about actually just stop showing that one? Yep. That yeah. one. Yeah. Stop showing that one. Because I can't tell if he's still alive or yeah, like yeah, what. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I can either. Let's stop showing that one. Uh, Jabes, I want to wish you the best this weekend. Thanks, bud. Yeah. I uh, hope you win. Who knows? I mean, who knows? I hope you're victorious. You know we're going to be talking about it next week. <sighs> so we'll find out. Find out. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I'm Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Rate us on iTunes. Give us a five-star and a nice review. The advertisers want them, and our ad agency wants them. So please, we've never asked in like We've never asked years. anything of you. Yeah, exactly. We've never asked in three years. Go do it. Rate it on iTunes. Five stars. Reviews. Love you. Good night, everyone. Good night.